nice to get the conventionals apart and paint strip the, the tubes so we can have a look at what they look like anyway. Hi, yeah, welcome to Dotweb TV. Uh, this is episode 9,300 and something. Um, in this one, we're going to show you briefly. This is a 2002 YZ125 that uh, Paul Wright and Matt Coles are building for Mike Brown to race. Uh, it's going to go black, that's all I'm saying. So he sent us the frame. We've had our fabricator Martin make the skid plate lugs. I made the skid plate, so that's going to be bowed on there. Then we fabricated, we, Martin the engineer, fabricated the 7mm thread pin for the steering damper. These are our triple clamps that we use, the right engineering triple clamps with the steering damper mount. Uh, we've checked it all over, there's a couple of little repairs, but apart from that, it's ready to go for powder coat, and then we can send it back to those guys to build. Um, so we're only doing this, we're going to prep the swing arm, which means we'll put the bracket on for the bigger brake. Um, but they're building it, not me, so um, one I haven't got to worry about. That's the one. So swing arm bearings, I'm going to show you on a linkage that we've got off a 2001 YZ250. We've got in bits in there somewhere. So I'm just going to show you, it's actually quite simple because there's no thrust washers like there is with the swing arm bearings. So basically, fingers crossed, the inner sleeves come out. Sometimes they don't, sometimes you've got to beat the bit out of them. Again, I'm going to use the Motion Pro installation tool, which is also a good removal tool. So that sits in there. Don't worry about the seals, they'll all come out. Um, you put the tool together. You put yourself a socket on, nice big socket on the, on the side to receive the bearings and the seals. And you're going to push the bearing into that space there. So I'm holding that, that end. It's really important that you get a spacer that's really accurate to the size of the bearing because if you go too small it'll just crush the sides down and you're left with the outer base of the bearing stuck in there then you're grinding the thing out and it just turns into an absolute ball ache believe me it's quite tight this one just keep going until it bottoms up Tone's just on the lathe, turning me up a little spacer. Problem being is that bearing is longer than the depth of my socket. So we just got a little bit of steel, Tone's just screwing at the end of it. And we'll use that as a spacer. Sit tight. So we got this in the workshop as well at the moment. Uh, it's one of Isaac Gifting's 2023 championship winning bikes. He won the ACU British Championship on a few of these. So this is one of them. Let's have a new graphics. We'll go through it, make sure it's ready to go. Still got the, uh, the scrutineering tag on it, so it's the real thing. This will be in our eBay shop shortly. She was snug in there, Tom. That's that is in there. It's just the seal on that now. So there's your bearing out. Give it a clean with Scotch Bright. Make it look pretty. Blast it. Whatever you got to do. I'll show you how to put new ones in in an altogether nicer linkage than this. At least give the impression we know what we're doing. So on reassembly, these are the billet linkages we make for the Chesterfield YZ 250s. Uh, I showed you how to take bearings out because the, bear the linkages that came with these were scrap. So I just showed you how to remove the bearings. Now you've got to start with everything nice and clean, all your new stuff laid out so you know what you're dealing with. Um, again, look at your bearing, look at the writing. You always push from the writing side. That was taught to me by a guy called Jim Lewis. who was actually at the time Dave Watson's mechanic, uh, the KTM factory in Austria. He was showing me when I was Merv's mechanic in 1986, not that I'm old or anything. 
But Jim was working in America, a company called Merge, last time I saw him. Good old boy, good egg, he taught me a lot. So, usual thing, assemble your, your pulling thing. You can do this in the vise with a couple of sockets. I've got to say, these Motion Pro tools are the bollocks, in fairness. So it's a bit dirty on that. So I'll get ready to push them all the way through. Again, you've got a, the hardest part is getting the bearing centralized so you've got space for both seals nicely. You can see it's going in nice and snug. Be easier, I'll do it in the vise. Hold that in the vise and just wind it in the vise. Bit more. I think that's it. Yeah, got enough space both sides for the seals. Now put the spacer in so when you tap the seals in, they don't fall everywhere. Okay, nice. Finger full of grease. At this point, you've got to be careful the needles don't drop out everywhere. So that's enough for that side. There you go. I'm not going to bore you with doing all three of them. Well, that's pretty much one linkage bearing replaced, ready to go, greased up, brand new. Do that three more times and you should be done. We'd love to know how we're going to get that back. So these are the conventional Olins that we're going to run in the 93 White Chesterfield Yamaha. These things are rare. As hen's teeth, they're really hard to find nowadays, especially nice ones. Um, we got these from a, a contact of ours in Holland. Um, they've been painted silver, so we'll paint strip of those in a minute, see how they look. But apart from that, they're all saveable. So we'll get them done gold nit nitrate, we'll anodize this tube, we'll then get our engineer to machine these back and make them look like brand new. Um, yeah, she's going to be cool with the uh, conventionals then. We've got Olin Shock on as well, so it's going to be, it's going to be the bollocks. Things with the old ones are all the same, they've just got a different brake carrier. Well, we're going to have to make a brake carrier. It's going, it's moving. I'll show you how we measure them. So apart from, we've done the frame and the string arm for the Brownie 125. This is the last thing, the um, subframe. So Mike wants to get his ball bag as far back on the seat as possible going down the hills. So. He's happy for us to lower the subframe, which lowers the tip of the fender about 15 mil. So we go about 5 mil. So to start, that's the 1251. This is the 251. We measure from, we actually use this little point here. So we measure the standard length, fill that hole in the weld. Then we measure it again, 5 mil less. And then that's your position where we remachine the hole. And then we'll take the bottom off the subframe before it goes on the bike. So that's your five mil lower subframe for the 250 and 125, both the same thing. Um, and that's it for this episode. Um, next time we've got something a little bit different, a little bit of a trials episode. Uh, I've got an awfully trick old HRC Honda to show you. And we are measuring up the brand new gas gas for some bolts, which is a world's apart. Trust me, that thing's trick. So I'll see you next time. Oh, like and subscribe, apparently. <laughs>